Hi you. We're in my house today. I know I'm in your house a lot, so I wanted to bring you into mine. And it's raining outside, so we thought we will film indoors today. Um, I mean, it's weird to have rain in Southern California, but um, it's not so bad. I mean, I'm from Buffalo, so <laughs> Buffalo, New York weather is, is a lot worse. So sorry, Buffalonians, and I'm sorry you're so cold right now. Um, so we're at my house and the kids are home. There could be yelling in the background. Um, sitting on my couch and luckily you probably can't see it really closely because we got this couch when Indy, our oldest son, was one and he's 14 now. <laughs> so it's got a lot of stains. It's been lived in. So uh, it's really time for a new couch, but I know as soon as we get a new couch, Stone, our 12-year-old, is going to spill something on it almost immediately. In fact, just last week or the week before, he spilled cereal all over this couch right in the corner and there's still a mark there. So no new couches yet for the Fightmaster family. <sighs> so anyhow, I was thinking about the rain and there's a lot of cold weather. There's a lot of extreme weather going on in different places. And it reminded me of one of the yoga sutras that has to do with changing a negative into a positive. Pratipaksha bahavanam. So I thought we would have that as an idea today to do our practice. And no matter what's going on, we will change the negative into the positive. Indy wants a pop tart. Oh, okay. Go, down. Go ahead, Indy. <laughs> So there's Indy. Go sit next to mom and introduce yourself. He's like, thanks. Thanks, Dad. This is Indy. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, can you get your Pop-Tart? Yeah. Okay. Indy eats a lot. <laughs> you know, when they're 14, they get pretty hungry. Do you know last summer, he was shorter than I am. I'm like 5'3", I'm not very tall, but Indy was shorter than me, and now he's like, I don't know, six inches taller than I am or something, just over the last, how many months is that? Like four months? August, September, October, November, December, five months. It's crazy how they grow like that. All right, so I'm gonna walk over to the mat and Indy's gonna take his Pop-Tart upstairs and we'll do some yoga. Are you ready? Let's do it. Bye, Indy. Bye. Oh, Elmer and Emma are here too. So I'm sitting, I don't know if you noticed, but I have like a little towel folded up. And if you have a little towel or a little blanket or something, grab it and you could sit on it if you want to, but there's something else I wanna use it for. So if you don't have that handy, go grab it. You can even use like a pillow, just something that you can sort of fold up and go grab it. And then I'll be right here when you get back. So let's come to a comfortable seat, closing the eyes, and just crossing at the shins. If you are sitting up on something, it's kind of nice to have your hips a little bit higher than the knees if possible, just more comfortable and less stress on the knees. And then start to come into your ujjayi pranayama. So as you're breathing, begin to find a little constriction in the back of your throat. And the ujjayi breath helps to warm the body from the inside. So those of you in the polar vortex, it's good. If you're cold, practicing ujjayi will help to warm you. And then let's take our hands together in front of the heart and create an intention for our practice. So may your practice help you to connect with your best self, realizing that in this very moment everything is fine and then whatever is going on, if there are any things that are negative, that we can turn them into positive. So learning 
Pratipaksha Bahavanam, turning the negative into the positive today. And then we'll release the hands and let the eyes softly blink open. And I apologize for the noise in the background, but it is Sunday, everybody's home. So grab your towel or your little pillow and just roll it up. I'm gonna make a little roll or a fold so it's kind of that-ish size and come onto your back. And then walk your heels under the knees and take whatever you have and hold it. So if you don't feel like you can give it a nice squeeze, then try it sideways or any way so you can feel like you're getting a good squeeze in between your inner thighs. And then just take a couple breaths here as you settle in. Make sure you're lengthening the sitting bones toward the backs of your knees. And then start to draw your belly in. So this will just be a little bit of a movement in the pelvis only. So we're not going to go into a bridge pose right away. But first, we're just going to start to warm up the pelvis. And also, at the same time, we'll begin to find our root lock, also known as Mula Bandha, which helps to create more energy and strength in our core muscles. So from here, as you inhale, you're just going to tilt your pelvis up so that your hip bones are lifting towards your lower ribs. At the same time, give that blanket a squeeze or the towel, and now lift up through the pelvic floor muscles of your body and then exhale, release it down. So once again, we'll inhale, start with a little pelvic tilt, and then this time lift your hips just slightly, and now pull your belly in, lifting up through the pelvic floor muscles, and then exhale, release it down. And then once again, inhale, lifting up, hip bones toward low ribs, belly in, pelvic floor muscles lifted, Pick up your hips just slightly and just kind of feel how all of that engages. And then exhale, release it down. Last one. So inhale, little pelvic tilt. Draw your belly in. This is Uddiyana Bandha, another one of the locks in the body. And then just lift your hips up. Start to pin your outer hips in this time, but keep lengthening your butt to the backs of your knees and try to lift up through the pelvic floor muscles as you hug in onto your towel or your blanket and just notice and feel all of those muscles starting to wake up. And then let's release it. You can move this out of the way. And then just making sure still your heels are under your knees, outer edges of feet parallel. We'll start with that same movement. So inhale, lifting up, and then keep lifting hips this time, low back, mid back, maybe upper back, lifting through the pelvic floor here, pulling in the belly just to feel it. And then exhale, start to lower all the way down. And now we're gonna add the arms. So have your palms face in toward each other and inhale, tilt the pelvis, draw in the belly, lift the pelvic floor muscles as you reach your arms over. Keep lengthening butt to backs of knees, keep the neck long. Exhale, take your arms down, lower down one vertebra at a time. When you get all the way down, lift your head and shoulders up. Now see if you can pull in again, the belly and the pelvic floor muscles and then lower down, same thing. Inhale as you lift. Start by tilting the pelvis, then hips, low back, mid back, maybe the upper back, stretching out the front of the body. As you exhale, lower down one vertebra at a time, coming all the way. And then when you get down there, lift the head and shoulders, pull in the belly, lift the pelvic floor muscles, squeeze the outer hips a little bit, the inner thighs, just a bit, and then release. Now hug your right knee in, Send your left leg out, take an inhale. Exhale, pull it all in, lift the head and shoulders, lift your right leg up. You can hold on to this left leg, or sorry, this right leg, whatever leg that is, or you can reach the hands forward. If your neck bothers you, then cradle the head for three breaths. And two, keep lifting. And now inhale, extend the right leg up toward the ceiling. 
Same thing, lift the pelvic floor and belly for three and two. Now you can stay right here or a little, little more challenging. Next inhale, start to come up and touch and then slowly lower, but not all the way down. I know you want to. Inhale up and touch. Exhale, start to lower. You can stay down here. Don't hurt your back. Inhale, keep your spine long and exhale. Good. Hug your knees in and relax. Nice work. Take a breath here. And now we're going to keep the left leg in, extend the right leg. I think that was cat noise. And then inhale, lifting the head and shoulders, right leg off the floor just a bit. Remember, you can hold here. It's a little bit easier or this is a little more intense. But if your neck bothers you, definitely cradle your head to protect your neck. Draw in through the low belly. Try to lift the pelvic floor muscles for three and two. Keep lifting. And one, inhale, extend the leg up. Keep lifting, belly in, pelvic floor muscles engaged. Couple more breaths. Now remember, you can stay here or cradle the head or inhale to lift. Ooh, a little harder on this side. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, belly is lifted. Keep the spine long, try not to round the back. Exhale. Last one, inhale, and then let's stay up. So if you're down, roll up to seated and lift your chest, bend your knees, hold on behind the knees. Keep, not this, but this, and then perhaps extend the arms for three breaths and two. And when release, crossing at your shins, come forward onto the hands and knees. Line up the wrists under the shoulders and the knees under the hips and inhale, bring your chest forward, lift your chin and tailbone up, shoulder blades toward the waist. Exhale, round the back, press away from the floor. Once again, inhale, bring the chest through, exhale and round. Now come to neutral, bring your hands forward about a handprint. Spread your fingers wide, turn your inner elbows toward the front of the mat, but make sure not to lock the elbows. Press a little extra into the thumb, first finger side of the hand, tuck the toes and stretch all the way back, feet hips width apart, and then just start to bicycle your legs. Make sure the arms are also shoulders distance apart. Now begin to bend both knees, but stick your hips way up high, still turning your outer upper arms back. Stretch out your spine, and then slowly start to straighten the legs as much as they will. They don't have to straighten all the way. Keep your ribs and your belly pulled in, and then play a little bit here at the bottom of your exhale to pull your belly in and up and lift your pelvic floor muscles and then let it release slightly so you can take a breath in and then once again on your exhale begin to lift lower belly in and up pelvic floor muscles in and up and then you can start to play with that as we add in some strength so as you inhale float your right leg up as you exhale, let's bend the knee and open up the hip just for a little stretch. And now square off the hips, inhale. As you exhale, bring your thigh in towards your belly and press so your shoulders are over the wrist. Now round your back a little and pull the belly in and up. Take a breath here. And then inhale, step the foot all the way up by the right hand and take the left knee down. Rise up for a low lunge, inhale, pull the right hip back. Still lifting hip bones toward low ribs, sink in. Reach up nice and tall. And this is one of my favorite things to do. This one and adding palms face front, inhale, exhale, open up the chest. I just love the way it feels. And then sweep the arms around. Inhale up. Exhale like you're scraping your elbows on the back wall. 
One more. Inhale, reach. Exhale. And then bring your hands down. Step into plank pose, top of a push-up. And for this one, let's take the knees down. For the first one, shift forward. Hug your elbows in as you slowly lower to the floor. Bring your hands by your low ribs and inhale for a little cobra. Pull your hands toward your feet. Pull your belly in and lengthen your butt again to your heels. And then lower down. So we'll tuck the toes. We'll keep the knees on the floor for this one. Press straight up into plank and then lift back to down dog. Again, make sure your arms are shoulders distance and your feet are hips width. And let's do the other leg. As you inhale, we'll lift the left leg back and up from the inner thigh, so hips are level first, and then we'll bend and open. So you can reach down through the right heel and stretch way back. Try and press evenly through the arms. Inhale, square off your hips again. As you exhale, draw the thigh in toward the belly and bring your shoulders over your wrists. You're almost rounding your back a little bit here. Keep the belly lifted. Lift through the pelvic floor muscles. Just another breath. And then step that left foot by the left hand. Right knee down. So pulling the left hip back. Inhale and reach. Sorry. Sorry about that. My hair is hitting the microphone. So try and lift the hip bones toward the lower ribs. And then face the palms front. Inhale. Make sure this knee's over the ankle too. Exhale, open up the chest and round it around. Inhale to reach. Exhale, bend and open. Let's go to your chest, a good stretch. One more. Inhale and exhale. Bring your hands down. And this time we'll step the, and now let's go back to plank. Back to plank again. You can always drop your knees down or keep them up. Shift the shoulders about an inch forward, hug the elbows in, shoulders no lower than the elbows. Then inhale to cobra or up dog, shoulders above wrists, thighs and knees up if you're an up dog. And then exhale, use the belly muscles to return to down dog. Let's take a couple breaths. And one more breath in. Exhale it out, bend the knees, look up, lightly step or hop your feet up. And inhale, lengthen the spine halfway. Exhale, fold. Now press through the feet and reach all the way up, inhaling. And exhale the hands down. I have to do something about this because I think it's hitting the microphone. Let me just pull it up a little bit. Okay, let's add some standing poses. Here we go. Make sure your feet are either hip socket distance apart or big toes touching and heels slightly apart. Inhale and reach up. As you exhale, hinge from your hip creases and fold. Inhale, lengthen. That did not work at all, did it? Exhale, come to plank. Hug the elbows in as you lower. Inhale to press up. And exhale, stretch back. Okay, so you breathe in down dog while I fix this issue. So make sure your arms are shoulders distance apart, feet are hips width. Spread your fingers, pressing into the base of the fingers, lift up through the forearms. And then as you take your next inhale, float your right leg up. Look between the hands and draw the knee in again to the belly and shift your weight forward so your shoulders are above your wrists. Then inhale, step it right in the middle of the hands. Spin the back heel down, line up heel to arch for warrior two. And exhale here. Knee over ankle. Make sure your knee is above your middle toes. And then taking your back arm, wrap it behind your back and reach up and back for reverse. And then inhale back up, lean forward, take your right arm around your belly and your left arm up and over. Keep dropping the front hip down, 
press into your front heel and as you inhale, return to warrior two. As you exhale, windmill the arms down. Now you can always go right to down dog or return to plank and lower chaturanga. Inhaling to up dog or cobra. Exhale back into down dog. Inhale for the left leg. Exhale, hug the knee into the belly, shoulders over the wrists. Inhale. Exhale, step it right in the middle and spin your back heel down. Hopefully you're lined up heel to arch already, but if you're not, just make your adjustments. Dropping your front hip down, make sure the knee is over the middle toes. Press the back thigh back, but lift up through the back inner thigh a little bit. Now take your back arm behind your back. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, back up. Lean forward, take your left arm around your belly and reach your right arm over. Press firmly into your front heel as you inhale, returning to warrior two. Now lifting through the belly and the pelvic floor muscles, keep that. Exhale, you can go right into down dog to stay or return to plank and lower. Exhale. Inhale, up dog or cobra, always your choice. And exhale back. Breathing here. Even out your inhales and your exhales. And just for a moment, the bottom of your next exhale, pull your belly in and up, lift your pelvic floor muscles. And then bend the knees, look up, lightly step or hop your feet forward. Inhale, come halfway lengthen. Exhale, fold. Press through your feet and rise up, inhale. And exhale. I'm gonna do that one more time, but a little bit faster. Here we go. Inhale, reach. Keep your ribs and belly in. Exhale, hinge from the hips, fold. Inhale halfway, so you can exhale to plank and lower or exhale and float back, landing in chaturanga. With your elbows bent, inhaling up, exhale back. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step it right in the middle of the hands. Spin the back heel down, inhale, warrior two. Exhale, make sure your knees over your ankle. Take your left hand behind, inhale, reverse. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, back up. Exhale, right arm around the belly, left arm over. On your inhale, press into the front heel, come back to warrior two. Exhale, windmill down, come to plank, or you can go right to down dog and stay. Otherwise, chaturanga, exhale. Inhaling up. Exhaling back. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, slowly hug it in toward the belly and then step it right in the middle of the hands. Doesn't make a sound. Spin the back heel down. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, make sure the knee is over the ankle. Take your right arm behind, reverse. Inhale, stay for your exhale. Come on up, inhale, lean forward, exhale, left arm around belly, right arm over. Let's stay a breath here. Now press into your front heel, inhale, return to warrior two, exhale, windmill down, go right to down dog or to plank and lower. Inhaling up, exhale back. From here, reach your right leg up again, inhale. Exhale, we're gonna bring it through for pigeon. Yay, pigeon pose. Now, if pigeon pose hurts your knee at all, I don't want you to do it. I want you to instead come onto your back and take this variation, right ankle above left knee, flexing the right ankle. 
if your knee is fine, then you can stay here. If you're rolling over onto that right hip, you can take that towel that you had and place it underneath your right hip so your hips are even. Lengthen, inhale. You can always stay here or exhale. Forearms are all the way down. Breathing. Relax your shoulders and your jaw. Take long, smooth breaths. And then as you take your next breath in, come on to your forearms. Take your left forearm parallel with the front of the mat and reach your right arm up. Twist, relax your shoulder. You can stay with this or reach back for your left foot. And you get a little quad stretch maybe. And then let's release it. Tucking the toes, we'll stretch up and back, so a three-legged down dog lifting the right leg up, level hips, and then set it down. Left side, inhale, floating the left leg back and up with level hips. As you exhale, bring it through, and then set it down your left ankle towards your right wrist. Now, even if the other side didn't bother your knee, if this side does, it's really important to take care of your knees. So you will again, instead, come onto your back and hang out here. I don't want anybody's knees getting hurt. If you're in pigeon pose and you're rolling off to the left hip, just stick your little towel there. Lengthen as you inhale, you can stay right as you are, or exhale to the forearms or all the way down. You're probably already all the way down, huh? And then just breathe here. See if you can allow yourself to release any place where you're holding tension. Sometimes we're gripping and holding on and we don't even realize. And not just in our bodies, but in our lives. We're usually afraid of the unknown, so we stick to what's familiar even if it's not healthy or the best for us. Sorry about the kids. <laughs> Let's take another long breath. And then we'll inhale and come up onto the forearms, bringing your right forearm parallel. Reach your left arm up, let your shoulders relax. You can stay right here or bending and reaching back for the right foot. Maybe draw it in, getting the front of the quad, the front of the thigh to stretch a little bit. Maybe you'll feel it there. You might feel more of a hip stretch as well. One more breath. And then let it go. Tuck your back toes under. And stretch your left leg back and up. Three-legged dog. Keep the ribs and belly lifted. And then we'll set it down. And from here, let's come through and sit. Bend the knees, step or hop to seated. And we'll make our way onto our backs. Actually, first, let's come into reverse table. So fingertips can face forward, but if you have any wrist issues, turn your fingers out. Make sure your feet are hip socket distance apart, toes will point in a little. And then as you're ready, start to lift. If you can, lift all the way up, roll your shoulders back, and maybe let your head go. 
press into your heels. Keep lengthening sitting bones to backs of knees. Spin your inner thighs down. And then see if you can play with pulling in the belly, lifting the pelvic floor muscles here. And then bring your chin in and lower back down. And now we'll come onto our backs. So you can use your hands to help you or you can roll yourself down using your belly muscles. And then with the knees bent, pick up your hips, take them to the right and drop your knees to the left. If you cross the right over the left, you'll get a bigger twist. And then turn, looking over the right shoulder as long as that's okay on your neck. Try and turn your belly up toward the ceiling as you twist. And then bring your head to center. Uncross your legs if they're crossed. Bring your knees, bend them, hips to center, and then take your hips to the left, knees to the right. If you want a deeper twist, cross your left leg on top of the right. Look over the left shoulder and breathe, turning your belly up toward the ceiling as your knees move the opposite direction. And release any tension in the shoulders, the jaw, anywhere else you could be holding it. And then we'll come back to center. And then Draw your knees into your chest for Upanasana. Lengthen your sitting bones down toward the floor. So you're stretching out through the lower back. And now we'll return your feet to the floor. And then we'll make our way into Shavasana. So I always take my hands at the tops of my hips and lengthen because I have kind of an archy lower back. And then extending the legs, allow your feet to flop open. And bring your arms by your sides with your palms up and let your shoulder blades draw down toward your waist. And take a moment to find your comfortable position. Releasing any tension in the forehead, in the jaw, neck, shoulders. Check your belly. Check your arms and your legs. Allow your hands and your feet to relax. And then we'll just stay here for a bit quietly. Quiet body, quiet mind. Shavasana. a slightly deeper breath in and let it go. Make some movements in your fingers and your toes, in your hands and your feet. And reach your arms overhead, stretch. 
and bend your knees and carefully roll yourself onto your right side. Pause here a moment to thank yourself for taking your practice. Every time you show up onto your mat, you're taking good care of yourself. And then using the left hand, make your way up to seat it. And we'll take a comfortable seat and I have a quote, my little notebook. This is a quote from Robin Sharma. Saying that you don't have time to improve your thoughts and your life is like saying you don't have time to stop for gas to put into your car because you're just too busy driving. Eventually, it will catch up. So you are here working on your thoughts, your health, and our yoga practice is really the best teacher. When we can relax and release things on our mats, we can take that off the mat into the rest of your life. You can do that. It's wonderful. You can breathe through traffic. You can breathe through anything. So bring your hands together. Let's bring the hands to the forehead to remind us to have clear and loving thoughts. Hands to hearts. Reminding us to have clear and loving intentions. And hands to the mouth, reminding us to have clear and loving communication. Sending out this positive energy we created together to all beings everywhere. Namaste. I'm so glad you joined me today in my house, Rainy Day Yoga. and. Um, I have some retreats coming up, so I would love for you to come. I'd love to meet you in person. Every time I meet Fight Master Yogis in person, I'm just blown away by how awesome you guys are. So I want to meet all of you. I will be this summer with the family. We'll be in Provence, south of France, in June. And then in beginning of July, we'll be in Denmark. So two retreats, and then after that to Amsterdam for a two-day master class. So if you go to fightmasteryoga.com, scroll down, it says find a retreat, click. I guess we could put a link below too, that'll be easier. You can find all the information there. Have a wonderful day. I hope it's warm where you are, you're not freezing. I hope the sun is shining. But most importantly, I hope you feel better. All right, and if you liked this class today, I have over here, two other classes that I think you'll love. See you later. Bye.